the second series of Purity Blues is coming up this year. Um, how do you take that story forward? And is it a reflection of the book or does it have a life of its own? With the first series, w w the characters, you know, the, the, the book gave us the shape and, and the tone and the, and the attitude. Um, but the actual way in which we played it all out, we had to invent. And, and all the adult story, which is more than 50% of the story, was also completely invented. Um, well, now those characters are walking and talking and breathing by themselves. And uh, frankly, it's been extremely easy and fantastic fun taking them on basically the next 12 months of their lives. Um, and that's how we've done it. Uh, it's a very, you know, little room. It's 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 just it's Imogen and and, and me and and the two main writers, um, Tony Mac Namara and Alice Bell, uh, with a little bit of help from John O. Gavin. And and it's just been a hoot, really. And and we we've mostly done it. Um, um, and yeah, they've got a life of their own. They're, they're, they're breathing again, and let's hope there'll be series three and maybe series four. I mean, you know, that it, we we our hope is that it can continue. Another success from last year was How's That, the Kerry Packer story and his war with the cricketing authorities. Yeah. What was it like um, controlling how the big man would be portrayed, one of the most feared men in Australian television? We did Paper Giants um, because I and, and the writer Chris Lee and, and I were both of basically the same era where our lives were shaped by more than any other event by the Whitlam period and we saw that as being a Camelot period in Australian history. Everything was different from how it was before and nothing and everything changed thereafter. And we got an excuse to do that little Camelot period because it happened to be exactly what the, um, the, the period where Ida ran um, uh, the, the clear. But that was also Kerry Packer's first success. So we had this kind of little glimmer into Kerry Packer. We wanted to go on and do a kind of a big Packer show from that. The ABC didn't. Um, until Paper Giants went on and was did what it did, and uh, then they changed their mind. You know, suddenly they wanted it, but Nine jumped in and said, "No, nah, this is our story." And they it would have been impossible for us to make it mm. in the other circumstance, so we ended up going with Nine. David Gingell believed it was his show. He, um, he was the one who really believed in it. He got Chris and I in very early on and said one thing. He, he, asked, he said one thing: I don't want you to do. And, that was, and that's a private matter, and it was perfectly simple. And he said, you know, Ros is my godmother, and I, I, I just want one thing excluded, nothing else. Anything else I'll help you. And he did. He went out of his way to help, be truthful, stick it out there. I'm not going to censor you, except in one area. And, and that was fine. And it was, and it was not relevant. So it was a fine kind of constraint from our point of view. We went, fine, yeah, we can live with that. That's, and they got behind us, and gave, but gave us carte blanche too. Uh, they were nervous. They were worried. They were worried we were going to upset Cornell, and we were, you know, because Cornell was Gingell's mentor. Um, they were worried about all those things, but they sat on their hands, and they were very brave, in my view, because there are obviously very close family connections and historical connect connections to that network, and they knew that it had to be Warts and All, and they were happy that it was Warts and All. And in fact, I think we've got more criticism for being painting Kerry as being darker than those who were close to him believed he was. And uh, you know, certainly all the cricket people, Ian Chappell, and, and, and they all thought we painted Kerry far too dark. Lockie did what he did, the text was what it was, and I think we got it basically pretty fair. Did you get any feedback from Cornell? Only, uh, only indirectly. Um, um, he had formed a, quite a good and close relationship with Chris Lee, and we got messages the next morning um, that that he was happy, that he, uh, um, and that uh, David Gingell's mum, who was very close to the, the yeah. events at the time and so on, she was very happy, and that the Packer family were also very happy. So it was a, it turned out pretty well because it was it was certainly no kind of hagiography. Had you ever met Kerry Packer? Never met him. I, I'd I'd kind of had brushes from the edge. I mean, I'd done one mini-series early in my career which was fine you know actually financed by him but but um and i'd nearly had another movie finance but it, but he he lost a lot of money on a horse over the weekend and a yes on a friday was a no on monday so so um they were my things though oddly enough i just after he'd sold it to bond i had a a number of things that i had to do with the nine network where i was you know in and around there um and thereabouts um but it was after kerry had gotten out.